I often read at great length your comments. I mean, I always read them, but sometimes I just take that extra time to pause after reading each comment and think about the person who wrote it. And sometimes the trials and tribulations that so many people go through. I mean, this is part of life to go through trials and tribulations. I mean, there's so much joy, but wherever you have something, you have an opposite. Sometimes it's really difficult to deal with that opposite. And the way that things are set up at the moment in the Western world in particular, there is very little support or help given to people who are in need. It's ironic, really, because we've always seen ourselves as those in the world who have always helped others. I remember as a child growing up and uh, attending what was invariably in Ireland, you know, a Catholic primary school. And there was little collection boxes in each classroom and it was a penny for the black babies. Imagine that. <sighs> Horrendous, really, when you think of it, you know, the way that the way that the established order seen people who were in need, when in fact a lot of it wasn't need, it was simply spreading um, spreading the beliefs and the dogma of the church. It was also funny in a way because as a child I did believe that at one point I would actually get to carry home from school a black baby. And my mother, I could see my mother and father's faces, you know, smiling and beaming. Oh, at last, all those pennies paid off. Ridiculous. But that's childhood, isn't it? How, how, how a child sees the world. It's fascinating and ridiculous at the same time. And quite humorous. So, in that way, when you think of it, Racism was actually part of the construct of education at that point. And that's not that long ago, you know. I mean, it's very vivid in my memory. It's interesting, isn't it, to look back and weigh things up, measure things out, trying to understand where we are in this moment, in this moment in history. And that's something else as well, because... History is actually happening in real time. Anyway, this is Monday morning. I am keeping a little record. Um, I know I'm taking a little bit of a break from YouTube, but I am keeping a little record. And hopefully I'll be able to post these little series of cottage diaries up. I'll get back to my coffee. Well, here we go. I brought this beautiful and rather large Buddha up from um, down beside the pond. And what I'm going to do, after I've given him a good clean, um, taking off some of this moss, etc. When I was clearing out the old shed, before I started work turning it into a pagoda, I came across this, along with lots of other things actually. See, metallic spray. So I'm going to turn him into gold. Yeah. Now I will have to get on with this because I'm holding this with one hand and trying to <laughs> scrub him with the other. So I'll just slip off my glove, turn this off and proceed. Well, that's the first coat of spray. I've got to do the back and the bottom and <clears throat> then give it another coat, but it's best to let it dry thoroughly before one attempts that again. Look 
looking good, I think. Well, finally got it finished. I have a little bit of paint left in the can, so I may just cover a little, cover a few little bits later on. Um, yeah, this is the third coat. So I've just sprayed it very, very lightly. Now, I think this is going to look really, really well over there by the pergoda. Yeah. Hmm. Very pleased with this. So, there's Big Buddha. He's had three coats of the spray and uh, that's going to protect him. And I think he looks very serene just sat there. It brings a very oriental look to my little pagoda. Little birds on the table there, they're, they're flying in and out. So I finally got my little bathroom, or should I say shower room, because I don't have a bath, uh, finished. So I've taken off the old curtains, I've cleaned the windows inside and out. Look, they're actually sparkling. <laughs> I've put up this lovely little Indian kind of a palmet, which I think looks very pretty with my stained glass there. And uh, I've put the little uh, curtain up on my compost bucket system which i think looks really neat and lovely why not have things lovely we don't have to live like cavemen <laughs> and uh, i've painted this little little stand and painted the floor so look look at the shine look isn't that lovely um painted the top of the washstand only so that still has its beautiful sort of old shade of green on the bottom. And cleaned down the shelves. Look at all this, cleaned them all down. A good old spring clean. So it only remains for me to get some kind of a new bucket for my little compost shavings, you know. Um, so I thought maybe a little wooden container, something like that, and then I could paint it this lovely shade of blue. Um, yeah. I'll have a little scar around for that, feeling that um, I shall make something. That's always the, uh, the backstop position. <laughs> I can make something. I'll just show you this one behind the door here. Okay. It's all done. And uh, my little curtain here, I keep that sort of tucked in there on the on the shower hose because it just allows me to see in there a little bit more space. Now, there we go. So the gravel has arrived. I had to cut back quite a few branches on the driveway for the big truck to get up here to deliver the gravel off. But anyway, such is life. So as you can see, I've started already on the gravel spreading. I'll show you around the back. So you can see here the effect that's going to be um, seen with this gravel. So I'm just literally putting it out in shovelfuls and that way then I can kind of make sure that I can cover the most area and also to do it you know with a little bit of sympathy for anything coming through like these little primroses down here. Now just taking a break from the spreading of the gravel it's pretty tough work because each wheelbarrow load weighs a ton well not quite a ton but you know weighs heavily but pleased with uh, how it's going thus far. So I've just started here and uh, 
just going round anything that's coming up through the gravel, like this lovely, um, uh, oh, I forget what it's called, can't think at the moment, but anyway, um, I've started up there and then I've worked out here, so I'm just filling in the bits now, and then I'm going to go up that way, took a big branch off the cherry tree yesterday, and, uh, because it was beginning to lean to one side. And then I'd be going round the fire pit and this area. So, I'm so thrilled to be doing this actually, even though it's hard work. I'm just thrilled to be doing it because it's going to bring the whole project together. So I'm just taking a little breather. The sun has come out through a sort of a cloudy sky, but there's lots of blue up there as well. It's rather beautiful as it always is. So, I've spread some of the gravel and the reason why I chose this particular gravel is that as it dries out, it becomes quite white and therefore, whatever light there is in the sky it just reflects it. It reflects it up and around the plants. So you get this beautiful Mediterranean feel. And of course, this is the back of the cottage. This is the part that faces south. Do you hear all the sort of crackling noises? That's the sun warming up the roof of the veranda. It's lovely to hear that after the winter. So I've got my coffee down here. I'm just going to get on with it now. I'm relaxing. Look, I've got my slippers on because I've been indoors. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. I've got something very important to share with you as well. But first of all, I've got to email Mike in Portland. Mike in Portland, you often leave comments on here. And uh, I've got something very, very, very surprising to share with you. Before... I um, talked to Mike. I'm just going to finish off this video by showing you the result of all this lovely gravel and the hard work. And believe me, <laughs> from the backs of my legs up to my neck, I ache. <laughs> but I'm delighted with the result. You can see I've taken away all the wooden decking that was just a growing problem. It's all been graveled in now. This looks a little bit darker because that's wet. You see, the as it dries, it goes this kind of white colour. There's the big orange bags, now empty. And I have to get a little bit more gravel to finish off this corner here and this little bit here. Um, but I'll probably just buy some small sacks. Two or three small sacks will do. No. It's all pulled together. I'm very pleased with the result.
You can find my books on my website, bealtonacottage.com. A Cottage in Three Acres, In Search of the Goddess Rising, and Walk in Between Worlds, as well as the Bealtona Cottage Guide to the Deep Midwinter, and the calendar. The calendar is on special offer now. You can also get the map with it for free. So the links are all underneath this video in the description box. But the Bealtona Cottage website is filled with photographs and hundreds of blogs with no advertising. So do have a look over there and a good peruse. I think you'll find it's very interesting. A little view of Bealtona Cottage when I first bought the cottage. And this was the land looking up from the road and the land looking down from the cottage. Blessings to you all.